at a truth, at a warning, and something the Lord wants to have. Luke chapter 12. The book of Luke chapter 12. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Somebody beside you don't have one, share yours with them. Luke chapter number 12. I'm going to begin reading with verse, oh, let's see, maybe 15, and then I'm going to skip some and read now. There's a, and there's a word, I want you, two words I want you to look for. Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. He said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. Beware of covetousness. That's the title of the message tonight. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Look at that, things, things. And then he proceeds to tell the story of that rich man that had all that stuff and he had his barns full and he tore down his barns and built bigger barns and all of that. And then he said in verse number 23, the life is more than meat and the body is more than raiment. He said there's more important things about life than just eating and staying alive and there's more important things in your body than just clothes and what you put on it. Now, look at verse number um, uh, 29. And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things, there it is again. See that word? I want you to look at that word, things. Do the nations of the world seek after? He said all these nations out here in the world, all they're interested is in things. Now let me ask you a question. Why do people want things so bad? Somebody answer me. You think it'll make you happy, right? I mean, we're all like that. You think, if I had that car, or if I had that boat, or if I had that house, or if I had that thing, and there's, there's nothing in here that's wrong with the things, but the Lord said, just make sure that you realize that your life don't consist of things, because it don't, it don't. Now look at verse number 30 again. For all these things do the nation of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Food, clothes, something to wear, food to eat. The Lord knows you need stuff like that. Verse 31, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added to you. So when the Bible talks about things, he's just talking about normal requirements of daily life. You gotta have something to eat, you gotta have clothes to wear, da, 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 da. We have extended that to video games and, and, and a bunch of stuff, stuff. At all that. So tonight I'm going to preach on the subject, beware of covetousness. Now that word beware is like you see a song that says, a sign that says, beware of dog. When you see a sign that says, beware of dog, that means you better look out. Because I, I was running to two yesterday. Uh, well, a big one down in Hickory, and there's this one big dog. I thought he was going to get me the other day when I went down there by myself, that high. And a kid was out there holding it. And I thought, if he sees me, he can break away from that kid. And I started going around. Now, yesterday, me and uh, who, who went with me yesterday? Ethan and, and Darren. Yeah, we went out here yesterday to a house right out there. And they got two big dogs. And they don't have a sign. And that's the kind you better really watch out for. Them that don't even care if you get bit, if you come in your yard. And, and, and them big dogs around there. And I told him, I said, now, boys, I got two big dogs. And then I thought, if them big dogs come around this house, I'm the only one that can't run. You want to see a one-legged man run? Let them dogs come around there. I'd be like a pogo stick going across there, that yard. But you know what? Uh, uh, they, there was a sign that says, beware of dog. That says, look, fool, you better stay out of this yard or this dog is going to tear the britches, uh, your britches legs off and maybe half of your leg. So it says, watch out for it. Watch out for that dog. Watch out for that dog. Watch out for that uh, cliff, watch out, the bridge is out. Beware, beware. Watch out for your, make sure your blood pressure is all right. Beware of high blood pressure. Beware of this, beware of that. Beware of germs, beware of the other. Now you want know the Bible said? Beware of covetousness. That means every one of us ought to watch out and make sure that we don't become covetous. Now rich people are not the only people covetous. I know poor people that all they do is lay around the house and wish they had something else. It's got nothing to do with what you have. It's got something to do with your heart and your attitude. 
Did you know the 10th commandment in Exodus 20 and verse 17 is thou shalt not covet? What does the word covet mean? The word covet means basically a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, a, a, un, a wrong desire of wealth, material things, status, health, power, food, anything that is thy neighbor's. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's ox or his field or his, his wife or his ox or anything that he hath. You shouldn't sit around and say, I want that. I want that. Because basically what you're saying is, I'm not happy with what I've got. I don't like what I've got. If I had what he has, I'd be happy. And you know as well as I know, one of the biggest things wrong with television, among about a thousand other things, one of the biggest things wrong with television is TV almost constantly makes you want something that you don't have. I mean, all those commercials, they're designed to make you want to go buy that product. They're designed to make you want to go buy that, them blue jeans or that, or that car or that, they put that on to make you covet. Now, you've got to understand there is a good kind of covetousness. Uh, there is a lawful covetousness. People say, I covet your prayers, right? Sometimes people say, I covet your prayer. Nothing wrong with that. I desire, want your prayer. People say, I, I covet uh, the right things in my life. I covet uh, the Lord's blessings and the good things of God. Nothing wrong with that. But it's a, an un, unholy desire for wanting more, 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 more different, more different, more different. I want to say three things about it tonight and we'll go real quick. Number one, number one, God wants us to be content. He said godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen? I, I'm, I like a song we used to sing a long time ago. Maybe we can sing it again sometime. He said, I'm satisfied with a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that land where uh, the, uh, we'll, I got a mansion, that silver land. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. And that old song was teaching, be satisfied with what God's give you here and appreciate what God's give you here and we've got something better waiting on us over there. That's the right attitude. Now tonight, God wants us uh, to be content. Most Americans tonight absolutely live in a state of covetousness and not ashamed of it. They brag about it. I've heard people. I've heard people. Uh, well, I've seen. I've seen. Um, um, guy walk by. And somebody said, "I'd kill for that car." I'd kill. I would kill for that car. Do you remember what you're saying? Oh, it's just a figure of speech, preacher. But you know, that's an attitude. Yeah, have you ever heard anybody say that? I'd kill for that. Huh? I'd kill. You'd really kill somebody for that? I say, well, not really, but uh, that's, that's a pretty strong thing to say. I tell you what you got to learn how to do, and we'll get to the end of the message, but we'll fair here at the beginning. You got to learn how to work hard and do the very best you can and take care of your family and take care of your wife and kids and husband needs and everything, and then just thank God for what he gives you. And be happy with it. Amen? I mean, you said, uh, how many of you husbands, or maybe some of you wives, uh, sometimes your, your husband or wife loves to watch these TV shows where it's always fix her up, they fix up this house and everything. I, when, when she, Kelly, sometimes she'll watch, I said, please don't watch that. Please don't watch it. I go, sure as the world. She'll want to say, let's paint the living room or let's paint that. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with that, but the more you watch that stuff, uh, have, you, have you ever been going somewhere and uh, you don't need a car? You don't even need a car. Nothing wrong with your car. And you say, uh, we need, we need, let's go walk this off. Let's go over to Toyota dealer. Uh, let's go over to Cadillac to see what they got. I'm telling you, you start walking around looking at them things. And you know what old Aiken said over in Joshua? He said, I looked, I saw, I coveted. And you know what he done? He went in there and stole that stuff and got himself killed. The best way not to go in debt for a new Cadillac is stay out of the Cadillac dealership. Uh, you'll, I mean, you'll, you'll sit there for a minute and first thing you know, some nice little guy that has uh, been to college three months and thinks he knows everything comes out and says, oh, hi, can I help you? We got this one right here and we can put you in this thing, you know, uh, right here today. For, uh, well, he'll have you talked to him about a new car. Uh, and next thing you know, you're coveting. Or if you see one going down the road, or if you see a boat, or if you say, man, I'd like to have that. Man, I'd like to have that. Now, please understand, there's nothing wrong with bettering yourself. There's nothing wrong with having a lot of things. What he's preaching against is not being happy with the things you got. The grass is not greener on the other side of the fence. 
You say, man, if I had what he had in California, I mean, I'd live up the high life. No, that guy in California is envying you and wishes he had what you've got. I, I know people, Lord, they wouldn't be happy if you bought them a solid gold Mercedes and had it trimmed out in diamonds and it drove itself, never had to put gas in it. They, they still find something wrong with it and want something else. Amen? I mean, th- 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 thy neighbor's house, thy neighbor's ox, thy neighbor's wife, only time you ever see her when she spent two hours on herself and put makeup on and everything else. Lord, if you've seen her in like he does and listened to her like he does, uh, you probably wouldn't want her, amen? Uh, there's, uh, you know what the TV said? There's the haves and the have-nots. There's the haves and the have-nots. And uh, bank robbers, sexual crimes, corruption, cheating, swindling, all the people are taking advantage because of this sin of covetousness, of covetousness. The Bible said beware. Beware, beware of materialism. Materialism is the state of valuing material things more than spiritual things. Valuing material things more than spiritual things. Big mistake. Now, let me say uh, secondly tonight, stuff won't satisfy anyway. The Bible said over there in verse, I think it's verse 15, it said a man's life consisteth not in the things which he possesses. Have you ever noticed the more stuff you got, the more oil changes you got to make, the more inspection stickers you got to worry about, the more stuff, and finally it gets to the place where he said, good night, I've got so much stuff, I'm miserable. I can't keep up. Then you got to hire somebody to watch after your stuff. You say, I can't do it no more. I have to hire somebody. Now, what you got to learn how to do is say, Lord, you've given me a good house, a good family, and a good car. They're not perfect, but I'm not either. And thank God you've blessed us. I'm going to work hard and do the best I can. And thank you for everything I've got. That's the right attitude to have, people. Thank God for your house. You say, well, I know somebody's got a bigger one. And if you had that one, there'd be somebody build one bigger than that. Do you know the biggest house, they say the Biltmore House is the largest castle in, in America, besides some of my kin folks maybe, uh, uh, but uh, I'm, they're, in, they're in West Virginia. But anyway, uh, they said this. I, I read that the, the big house there was made for, uh, what's that fellow's name? Um, that's it. William Randolph Hearst, the Hearst Ranch in San Simon. California, built in 1939. That thing cost $30 million in 1939. Listen, if a man builds a house in 1939, pays him $30 million for it, that's a whopper, buddy. You can count on it. That's a house. I don't know what $30 million in 1939 would be now. 100, 100 at least, 150, I don't know. $150 million. It has 100 rooms, it has a 109-foot heated swimming pool. That's in 1939. It has an 80-foot assembly hall. That's as big as this room here uh, where they can just meet for company and have meetings. And a garage that held 25 limousines. The house was big enough for 60 servants to stay there and take care of it. Remember what I said a minute ago? You get so much stuff, you have to hire somebody to watch after your stuff because you're over here watching this other stuff and trying to get this other stuff. And a man's life don't consist of stuff. Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 10 said, He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. Now, please understand what I'm saying. You ought to get up tomorrow morning and go work hard and make the best living you can make. The Bible encourages that. The Bible encourages thrift. The Bible, there's a man one time over there, he gave three men some stuff and he come back and one of them hadn't done nothing and he took what he'd done away from his and gave it to the two guys that had worked and made a profit. So God encourages working. God encourages business. God encourages, uh, what do we call it in our country here? Uh, uh, free enterprise. God, the Bible teaches that. The Bible teaches private ownership of property. The Bible teaches that we're supposed to have 
thrift and make a living and prosper. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But here's what's wrong is when all you can think about is more, 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 more so I can get ahead of him, so I can get ahead of them, so I can be better than my neighbors. So I'm better. That's a wicked lifestyle. I'm telling you tonight, I don't have the nicest house in, Bur- in uh, McDowell County. But I don't have the worst one either. I mean, I'm, I'm happy it needs a little work done on it. Uh, it's got some, I've got a little problem with the roof here and there. I've got some old pipes underneath it that, that's, that's probably about ready to bust and have a couple of times. I mean, it's not very... Do you know what? I was telling Kelly the other day, we got to look and I thought, you know what? Thank God for our... We got heat. We've got lights. We've got electricity. We have comfort. We have a nice warm bed to sleep in. We have plenty of food to eat. God's been good to us. And brother, we ought to thank God for what he's done for us. Hallelujah, buddy. Every one of us ought to just be thankful for what God's done for us. Can't hear you. That's right. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, stuff won't satisfy. I heard a rare interview. Somebody put a a documentary on, just a little short, and I heard a very rare admission. You always hear preachers say, these movie stars are not really happy and everything, and the kids sit there and say, I don't know. They looked happy when I seen them. They looked just drunk. Uh, They they, they looked happy when I seen them. I got a a clip of Lady Doodoo, and she, and Lady Doodoo said this. Let me tell you what she said. Quote, and she called her name. Her name's like Stephanie or something. Uh, and, uh, and she called herself name. And she said, lady, uh, and called her real name. She said, why are you unhappy? She said, she gets out and does all those videos, the satanic rituals at the Grammys and stuff, and says, I am not happy. She said, I'm tired of being used. I'm tired of signing autographs. I'm tired. I'm not happy. People listen to that. Are you listening? She's not happy. A man's life consisteth not. Russell Brand, the old perverted British comedian. He was the one that was dating Katy Perry a long few years ago, and that made him famous around here. And he was a wicked, wicked, perverted, ungodly. I can't stand to look at him and hear him talk. And here's what he said. He said, I always thought, quote, it would be great to be rich and famous, but it ain't worth it. I still feel empty. He said, I still feel empty inside. Now, it's hard for me to identify that. Listen, people, it's been a long time since I felt empty. I was 18 years old last time I felt empty. And that's a lot. Shut up. I know that's been a long time. That was a hundred years ago. Uh, uh, you know, so you ain't no spring chicken no more yourself. Uh, but I'm telling you, brother, I, don't, I haven't felt empty since I got saved. I've had some bad days. I've had some miserable days. I've had some rough days. I've had some days when I didn't know if I was going to make it, but there's always been something, somebody inside. Thank God inside there. I ain't never been empty since I got saved. And he said, there's emptiness on the inside. Eric Clapton. Older people know who Eric Clapton is. Great guitarist. I'm telling you, Duke played guitar. He was friends with George Harrison. And Eric Clapton played the great band Cream back, you know, the 70s. and you know, The hippie band and stuff. I mean, one of the best guitar players in the world. And you know what he said? He said, I had millions of dollars. I had women. I had cars. And I had houses. He said, I had millions of dollars. And he said, every day I want to commit suicide. Right? And I thought, there's Eric Clapton walking around. He could write a check for a million dollars, buy any kind of yacht, buy, take any kind of trip anywhere in the world, and the moonshiner is happier than he is. Ain't that right, sister? Amen. That's right. You say, why? Because happiness, it's not in the abundance of the things that you possess. That's right. That's right. Money never made a man happy, nor yet will it. The more you have, the more you want. Instead of filling a vacuum, it creates one. John Lennon. John Lennon. When I was a little kid and the Beatles came, and I remember everybody worshipped the Beatles. That's, how, that's why I learned how to play guitar. Everybody did. 
We got ten cans, and one of my sisters beat on them for a drum. And we got, they get to, everybody wanting to play in a band. They changed the whole country. The devil was in them people. And uh, and I remember I remember the country changing, and I didn't even know what was, what was going on. But anyway, John Lennon said this. He said, the Beatles, we made it to the top, and there wasn't nowhere else to go. He said, after we got to the top, we looked around, there ain't nowhere else to go. And he said, I realize that, that whatever this is, the top ain't going to make us happy. And he said this. John Lennon said this. There was nothing to do. He said, I got to the top and looked around and said, now what? I done had everything. Listen, I know some of you have a hard time. You say, buddy, if I had their money, I'd go to the Bahamas and I'd go here and I'd travel the world. Then what are you going to do? After you eat the best steak and the best lobster, listen, it don't get no better than liver, musk, and cheese. After, I mean, after a while, your taste buds, I mean, that's right, get you a big hunk of liver, musk. Listen, you know what? I'd just soon have potted meat and, and, and saltine crackers and a Pepsi. I think the best thing I ever put in my mouth is that haagen chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream. I, I ain't never put nothing in my mouth no better than that. No redneck like me can afford that. Thank God, brother. I'm glad. John Lennon looked around and he said, there ain't nothing else to do. After you've got everything, you still feel like you did before you had it. Want something else? I'm glad somebody told me the right way. I'm glad I went to an old-fashioned camp meeting, heard preaching, and I found out what satisfies a man. I ain't faking neither. I've got him down on the inside. Stuff won't satisfy. A fellow named Irving Barr. Might have heard about him. Had a very, very, very expensive wife. And they got a divorce. And one of his complaints about his wife in court was uh, uh, excessive and ridiculous lifestyle habits. They went into her closet. She had 106 shirts, 92 blouse, uh, 81 pairs of shoes, 81 necklaces, 62 dress suits, pantsuits, uh, 60 per purse pocketbooks, 23 robes, 23 nightgowns, 55 body shirts, 39 sweaters, 36 bracelets, 25 halter tops, and 10 watches. He said, the only way a man can be happy with a woman who likes to spend money is like earning it. <laughs> For the rest of you that are slow, the only way a man can be happy who has a, a woman who loves to spend money is love to make money. Stuff won't satisfy. Lord, I know people, I've been around preachers, and every time I'm around, their wife says, we need to get this, and we need to get that, and we need to build this, and we need to build that. Now, ain't nothing wrong trying to better yourself, but good night, people. Some people wouldn't be satisfied if you put them in a, in a solid gold house, and everything in the house is new. There's nothing wrong with wanting to put down new floors. I know, I know, I'm... I'm, I'm a holdout on that stuff. As my, my girls come to the house one day and say, Daddy, your house needs a makeover. And it probably did. And, and she, Kelly's done a great job playing uh, the dining room, the living room, the hall. I'm trying to get out of what I said a while ago. And, uh, uh, and, and most women would want way more than what she does. She does good, really, compared to most. Is that enough? And, uh, uh, but I'm, I'm telling you tonight, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you can't just live. Stuff don't make you happy. Stuff don't make you happy. Especially when you're going in debt head over heels and you have to have new carpet just because your neighbor got it or another car just because your neighbor got one. That's what he's talking about. Don't covet. Beware of it. Now, number three, and I'm through. Life don't consist of things. People spend money they don't have to buy things they don't need to impress people they don't like. Amen? That's right. Wealth does not consist of having great possessions, listen to me, or, 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 or not having wants, but have enjoying and appreciating 
what you already have. Godliness with contentment. The Bible said, where your treasure is, there your heart be also. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain. We'll take nothing out. You know how you come in this world? A little bitty, naked, scrunched up baby. When you leave the world, you leave that same way, except you're a lot uglier. And you ain't too pretty when you got here. But you're, you're really bad when you leave. Something stay in this old sinful world 70 or 80 years will make you ugly. And you know what? That's exactly how you're going to leave in your birthday suit, buddy. You ain't taking one penny. A man's life don't consist of what he possesses. Life is more than meat. The body's more than raiment. Godliness with contentment is great gain. I'm going to tell you three little quick thoughts and I'm done. Number one, what is a good life? What is a good life? You want a good life? What is it really? I'm old enough now that I can look back and I remember sometime when I was young, I'd see, I'd see somebody driving a car or something like that and I'd say, my goodness, I'd like to have one. And I'd rate and scrape and go in debt and buy one. And I mean, it's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. But I still, I still had something inside me that wasn't really satisfied. Still always something. Want more. Want more. Want more. So the best life you can live is, number one, be saved. You be saved and know it. Be saved and know you're saved. That's the best life you can live. I got to lead that young man uh, to the Lord. I, I, didn't, I don't know if I, I mentioned all of you in here this morning. I got to lead a boy to the Lord on the way to church this morning, on the phone, the most unusual thing. I don't know if I've ever done that before. Uh, uh, over there in, in uh, what's the name, Ashland's driveway, when we backed in there, I actually prayed with him, but I witnessed him and gave him the Roman road all the way down the road. And he called me from Texas Called twice last night, once this morning, and he said, I watch you on YouTube. He said, I want to get saved. And I said, my good man, that just don't happen. So I started saying, man, you got to do this, you got to do that. He said, I believe in God. I believe everything the Bible says. He had watched me preach one of them videos on YouTube and scared the devil out of it. And I led him to the Lord, and I said, buddy, get in there, get in there, get in there, get in there. Sir, God, read your Bible. The best thing in the world is to be saved. Now look, people, people spend all this money, let me, let me read you something here, what I had wrote down here. Spend all this money on stuff. You know the most expensive movie that was ever been built was the Pirates of the Caribbean, $378 million it cost to make that movie. And they might come out with one now, later, that is even more than that. It used to be the Titanic way back 20 years ago. But there is a Ferrari that cost $2.5 million. There's a Lamborghini that sells for $4.5 million. There is motel. People, people it's all the time about motel. Listen, when you get to sleep and covered up and that fan's running, you don't know if you're in a $300 room or a $75 room. Really? You say, yeah, I do. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, there's a limit. There's a limit. There, I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a plate of food worth $125. People say, I went there and this food, it's $125 a person. Yeah. Listen, it can't be that good. Can't be. Can't be. There's ain't no food. Potted meat is good as some of that stuff. I've been to restaurants. When you go to a restaurant and they ain't even got ketchup on the table, what kind of a nut are they? I, I, you, you order ketchup and they bring you out a little bitty thing like that right there. You're in a weird place that takes advantage of educated people and getting their money. Educated people that ain't real smart. You go to a restaurant and you even got ketchup on the table, you, you done, they done sold you a bill of goods, buddy. I didn't plan on saying none of that. I'll add another one. There ain't no such thing as a pair of tennis shoes worth $250. I don't care if LeBron James and Kevin Durant and every one of them kissed them and slobbered on them before they put them in the store. They ain't worth, they ain't worth 150. They ain't worth 100. You ever notice what, I ain't, I ain't got my tennis shoes on tonight. These shoes got, I mean, when we went to California, them snake skins supposedly in their, that's ridiculous, they're $79. I think Carrie bought them for my birthday. And you know what? I ain't paying no, no hundred dollars for no pair of shoes. No pair of shoes. None. You say, but these are, I, I don't care what they're made out of. 
Have you noticed now, Kelly won a pair of tennis shoes, and I was going to surprise her, but I didn't know what kind she liked. And I went in belts, and I looked at them, and they got all colors of them, and I picked them things up, and them things look like a little old fish. I bet it don't cost $10 to make them things. Them Under Armors, all that stuff. I bet it don't cost $15 to make them. And they're $90. You know why they're so light? They ain't nothing to them. <laughs> we used to buy tennis shoes, but them Converse, we used to wear, they'd last you two years. Nowadays, you gotta have one, you, they have to have one to match every, every outfit and, and the shoe strings to match every. And, uh, Lord have mercy. I, I mean, people, where's your brain at? They, I know, I know you didn't. <laughs> They ain't no blue jeans worth over hundred and fifty dollars, and they look like they found somebody held them up, and shot them with a shotgun, and throwed Clorox all over them, and they're a hundred dollars. We'd have thrown them away when we was growing up. I, I thought about them shoes, and I thought, good Lord, when we went to California, I think it was the time I took Carrie. I, I preached out there a lot, and right on the other side of Los Angeles, and I kept telling her, I said, I'm gonna take you out there, because Chris and Corey was too little. So next time I went, I got her a plane ticket, and we both went to California. And we went downtown Hollywood. And it's been, Lord, 20 years ago. And down Rodeo Drive, where you see them on TV where the movie stars really go shopping. And we went in that store. Good night. I'm telling you, a pair of shoes like this right here was $800. That's 20 years ago. That will be 2000 now for a pair of shoes just like that right there. $2,000. They had leather jackets, real nice, and it's ostrich skin. Got them little, you know what ostrich skin was like? Got them little things all over it. I mean, it's nice, but really smooth leather to me looks better. I don't know why you want little pimples all over it. And they, and, and things cost $17,000. I said, I said, $17,000? He said, I said, $17,000 for one? And we, remember, we started dying laughing. And honestly, they couldn't get over her. They thought she is Ellie Mae. Because she talks, she talks really more country than I do. I've learned how to speak properly all these years of preaching. But, uh, I mean, they was laughing at her. Uh, they, they tried to get her to talk, and they said, are you, are you just like Ellie Mae? And uh, we, we laughed. I said, does anybody buy these things? He said, oh, yeah, we had a celebrity come in here and bought 10 of them. Oh, there's light blue, dark blue, brown. That's $170,000 for leather jackets. There's some questions I want to ask the Lord when I get to heaven. And that be one of them right there. If it don't slip my mind, I want to ask the Lord, why did the crazy people have the money? You got problems. Buddy, you cripple too high for crutches if you'll pay $170,000 for a leather jacket. Wear it one time on when you're on the Tonight Show. You know how they do. They take their tie off so they look like they've had a hard day and just wear a suit jacket and they're kind of like trying to look all cool and everything. That's covetousness. Covetousness. Life don't consist of that. Be saved. Number two, have your family. Have your family. If you've got family around you, thank God you ought to be happy. Thank God. If you've got a wife and kids or a husband or just kids or any of those or all of those or any of those, you ought to thank God. I meet so many people. I meet so many people that have no family. No family. I was talking to somebody the other day. I can't remember who it was. They said, I have no family. I said, you mean you don't have no brothers and sisters? No. You don't have no, no relative? No. They said, preacher, I don't know. Now, and they, they was talking about dying and not knowing what to do. I said, listen, if you've got family, listen, thank God. Thank God for your family. I thank God for my family this evening. I thank God for my family. I love them. And I hope you do too. Listen, there's people that give anything in the world to have your family and your kids or your wife for your husband. Thank God for your family. Be content with it. And then church. If you've got a good church to go to, we get emails all the time. If I lived within 100 miles of that church, we get one from this guy in Africa. I'm sure he's, he may be watching or he'll see this. Get one guy in Africa. He said, shining light's my home. Shining light, you people ought to shout. You got, they love the choir. They love, Brother Jason, they commented on y'all singing the other day about how good it was and how much it blessed them. We ought to thank God for we've got a church. 
We're rich tonight. We ought to thank God, let me tell you, for your help. Because I don't care how much stuff you got. If you lose your health, you can't, you can't even eat. These movie stars in Hollywood tonight laying in the hospital has got 25 or 30 million dollars in the bank that would write a check to you tonight, five million dollars, if they could trade bodies with you. That means you got something worth. You got something more than what they got. Because what good's all that stuff if you're laying in the hospital and you got throat cancer and your esophagus and you can't eat? If God's give you help, the other day, you know, when, it, when this happened to me, I, I, I aggravated him. I said, okay, Lord, okay, Lord. I know what he's saying. He said, slow down. You better take time getting ready for this youth rally. I said, okay, I hear you. I got it. I ain't stupid. The first thing I ask myself, what you want me to do? And, and give, put some more time in the Lord's work. I'll do it. I'll do it. I ain't dumb. But I learned my lesson a long time ago. When, when, the, Lord, when the Lord does something, you better listen to him. And I listen, that made me. And then I thought, good night. I could walk last week. Now I can't. And, and you imagine, what if you really couldn't walk? What if you really lose your voice? What if you really lose your appetite? What if you really, these people hear it every day. It's cancer. There's people here it every day. Heart attack. Like that little old boy, 13 years old. You don't know. There's people your age today that give anything in the world to feel as good as you feel right now. So be content with your help. If you feel good, you ought to raise your hands every day and say, thank God. I'm telling you, if you feel, because the day's coming when you may not have that. Godliness with contentment. Are you happy with what you got? Well, Brother Danny, every time I watch TV, it makes me wish I had what they had on as the stomach turns and, and, and the world's upside down and, and then people on TV. Just leave that junk off. It just makes you want something you ain't got. Look around and say, you know what? I could be a lot worse off. You could be in a foreign country somewhere dying with AIDS and going to hell when you leave. Be content with what you got. Beware of covetousness. We forget covetousness is one of the Ten Commandments. I mean, we take that, thou shalt not kill and commit adultery. We take all that seriously, but we all say, man, I'd kill for her looks. I'd kill if I had. You're breaking the commandment just like people break the commandment committing adultery, according to the Bible. Beware of covetousness. Let's all just be happy with what we got. Let's stand. Let's stand by our heads and pray. Let's just pray for a few minutes.